Hi guys, Jessica Sanders here, ColorMeCreativeArt.com. Uh, thank you so much for stopping by my channel. So today I want to share with you a little bit more about chameleon pins and also uh, give you a little tutorial on how to create a gemstone. So let's get started. I have been working on and practicing for Inktober uh, how to use chameleon pins, which are these tone mixing pins if you haven't heard of them. Uh, I just made a blog post last week that you can click over to and I have uh, eight tips for using maybe ten anyway eight or ten tips for using these pins for beginners now as you know if you've been following me I'm kind of a beginner when it comes to alcohol markers I'm very familiar with the alcohol inks that come in the little bottles like these I've used them lots but for the markers I really haven't used them before uh, and so I took Inktober as an opportunity to try and, and practice and learn. And so I did a lot of experimenting. Um, this is a little card. This has nothing to do with my Inktober drawings. It's a practice card. And so I encourage you to practice when, you, when you're learning about new materials or when you're trying new techniques. Um, I was testing, okay, how does it look? How transparent are these inks? What if I lay color over color? What happens? If I put yellow over blue, does it make green? The answer was yes. I put a yellow over a reddish color and it made orange. And you can see here, uh, this is a, a red color and a blue color. And it made this nice purple, kind of a really tonal purple. And maybe you can see here where I just thought, okay, can I see if I draw underneath? And I could. So these are like a lot of little test patterns that I did, just playing with the markers. And then I was testing blending. Now I'm not using marker paper. They're going to behave a little differently on marker paper. This is a um, artist quality cardstock uh, that I've been using it on. I've also been using it on Bristol paper. And they really blend pretty well. And your paper absorbency does matter. Keep that in mind. And they also, they're alcohol markers. So even though this is a pretty thick card, the ink does bleed through, especially if you lay down a lot of ink. So that's a practice, kind of a gradient that I did. And I thought, oh, I can make a galaxy. I thought that would be fun to try. And I did, and it worked out really great. And I just used for the center the chameleon pins, and I did use a white gel pen. Uh, so this was kind of a lot of fun, and then I did some blending practice here on the edges, and also there. And then I thought, oh, you know, this reminds me of how an eye looks when you draw it, and so I drew this eye and, and played with the colors a little bit, and I felt like it. it's such a, the colors are rich, but they're transparent, and they they seem to capture light if you can if you can uh, work on it you know if you practice and so uh, I do I did this little eye and I was pretty happy with how that turned out I felt it was very luminescent and had a lot of depth to it and then of course I just go off on these little trails my next trail was hmm these these uh, gemstones that uh, maybe are done like a zen gems and and different things just painting kind of the smooth shaped gemstones would be really cool so this is my first practice I was just trying it out and see what happened and you see all of this this is where i'm testing the color i'm testing how long i had to fuse it was it fused enough what that that's what this is um, and so then i tried just all these little different color combinations and techniques and this is a circle where if you use the fuse for like 15 just count to 15 and you start in the middle and you work your way out you get a really cool circle i really like that anyway i was pretty happy with the way these turned out and then i just couldn't stop working on them so i made some more <laughs> uh, and these are a little bit different you can see they're they've got these kind of stylized highlights um and i'll tell you what so um, let me see if I can figure out. So these first ones took me, I don't know, each one took me 15 minutes or something. It took a while. I, I'll be honest, for me to sit and work on one small thing like that for 15 minutes is 
a lot and uh, but I just wanted to keep trying and so I made this big one and that probably took me about 10 minutes and I made this one and that took a little while then I watched a video uh, I will look that up and put the link in the bottom but basically the lady was using a Copic marker to color to color and blend and I just needed a jumping off point and so to watch her do that with the Copic markers because most people are doing it with colored pencils and color pencils are a different beast altogether <laughs> from the markers and they take a lot longer I want something that's gonna be, give me you know that instant gratification practically so this took me like five minutes or less so from then on after I watched the video and saw how she was layering the inks I, I kept on so thank you to um, the person I will put your link in the bottom I'm sorry I can't remember who you are right this second uh, and so I made all of these and it went so much faster which is why I kept going and I made all of these and I had so much fun I did a little bit of shading with graphite here to add some depth I made big and small and different shaped um, and so then that was just some practice with the chameleon pins and it really didn't incorporate it into uh, it wasn't part of my inktober drawings these are just practice drawings let me set those aside um, but then I went you know it would be really cool if I incorporated it into my little graphic line that I'm drawing and so that's what I did for this one um, and I just used two pl two pins I believe plus my pigment micron two chameleon pins I used the caramel and I used um, the dark brown I think it's called burnt umber uh, for this and I was and I did use a white gel pin but not very much uh, so I'm really liking how they're looking I was happy this is my inktober number 11 and then inktober number 12 did not have a gem I but I did practice these little shiny reflective highlights and I just love that technique if you're interested in seeing that technique let me know and I'll make a video for that and then so I did this one yesterday which was a nice little gemstone and I also incorporated the shiny bits here and then made this really shine and sparkle um, and I really loved it so I thought that you might love it too and I would share with you how to make a gem I'm not going to do this blue and green I am going to just start from scratch and I've got a piece of paper and what I'm thinking of when I make these, now sometimes they're in settings, like this would be considered in a setting maybe, like you might have it on a ring in real life and it would be in setting. Uh, and these I just have these lines around and what I feel like is this is kind of a wire wrapped gem. So that's the way I'm thinking of these, these are wire wrapped gems. So you may see the line goes across what I consider the edge of the gem where I colored it. Um, and those are all just decisions that I kind of make on the fly. You just go with what works for you okay so I'm going to show you how to make a basic gem something similar to this um, but with different colors I'm going to use the red coral and the burgundy uh, as the two colors of the gemstone I am going to use my pigma micon oh <laughs> I'm going to use my pig pigma micron 05 the that's a pretty fine tip but it's not super fine so I I, I found that this, this the 01 is a little bit too small although I like the fine lines it makes and I'm going to use this uh, jelly roll white jelly roll so let's get started so the first thing I do is I did just like my inktober drawings and I kind of just make a random shape or circle now gems come in a lot of different shapes they can be oval they can be triangular they can be a square they can be you know any shape really you want they can but I want to go kind of for a roundish one uh, so I'm just going to draw kind of my wire wrapping here and I don't want it to be perfect perfect is not me and because I like these little dots I keep putting them on my drawings no matter what I do <laughs> they just 
I don't know, they just keep appearing. Okay, so I've got a little start on my drawing there in a space that I can use to put my gem in. And so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take my lightest color, which is the red coral, and I'm going to be using the brush nib. Now these are really, really soft, and I actually really adore them. And it's nice because the pen sets come with extra uh, brush nibs. This also has a bullet point, but I, and I, I may use that, but I'm probably not going to. Okay, so I'm going to disconnect, and I'm going to fuse. And so I'm going to fuse this for maybe 10 or 15 seconds. I'm going to have a little sheet of paper. I'm going to put that where you can see it because this is my test paper. So I can test my fuse and see how long. And I want it to be clear. No color. Okay, so there's still a little bit of color there. I'm going to fuse it a little bit longer. Now for most of these fuses, I'm going to edit those out of the video just for time's sake. But I just wanted you to see kind of how long it takes. It does take a little patience, but it is worth it. Okay, so now I have mostly the toning solution and I'm going to pick an area on my gym that I want to be the lightest and brightest um, and actually what I'm going to pick is the, the place on the gym where the light is bouncing around on the inside so if you can see this here this is the light on the inside that's reflecting through the gemstones so that's the area I want to choose first uh, and so what I want to do is, that's going to be at the bottom, and let me test my, okay. And I'm going to circle the area, or kind of draw a space around the area that I want to be this bouncing light. And I did that with the very clear area, okay. Then I'm going to kind of just start coloring around it. I don't want this to be really uniform. Now, if you want yours to be super smooth and uniform, you can do that. These pins will allow you to do that, but I don't want mine to be uniform. And you can see the ink is getting darker. I kind of like to be able to have and be able to see what seems like or suggest that there are little spots of light in places. And so I'm going to leave, now that I have this ink flowing through here, it's actually, I'm going to fuse again because see how dark that is? That's almost too normal. So I'm going to fuse. Not quite as long, probably. Test it. It's almost clear. It is clear. Okay, which is perfect. I'm going to go over this edge and smooth this transition. So that is also something you, you should know you can do is you go back over the edge. You smooth the transition if you want to. Okay, now I'm going to kind of make some little swirly kind of marks. Because what I want to do is leave some other light spots. I, I have a jelly roll pin, and I'm going to use that. But I want to use it really as little as possible. And I want to look like the light is bouncing around. So I'm just kind of making these random spaces. Now, like I said, if you want your gym to be perfectly smooth, you probably don't want to do this. And I'm making fewer random spaces and smaller random spaces as I work my way down. Now I'm going to use the second color of ink over this in a minute, but I'm not doing that yet. I just want to show you what I'm doing here. Okay, now then, maybe a little bit more, but not too much, because that's those white spaces are going to show up later. All right, now I'm just going to color in the rest of this gemstone pretty solid with this color because this is actually the lighter of my two colors. I'm going to deepen the color with the other. The other thing you need to do is opposite of this highlight is leave a very skinny highlight. Something like that. Okay, now you don't have to do that because you can go back with a gel pen and that may be easier for you and that is perfectly fine with me and, and how it works for you is great, but this is the way that I have found in my not extensive studies. These are my studies that I've just shown you. That's the way I found. Okay, and I want it to be leave a light space on this side, but I want this part to be very dark, to be the darkest really of the whole, this area, 
actually is the second darkest and I want that to be curved on one side that's just me totally up to you and so I'm just laying on some thicker ink here because you can layer these inks okay then I'm also going to want the edges to be the darkest so I'm going to kind of go back over the edges a little don't worry about if you get out of lines because the way I'm doing this is kind of I like doing things the simple way so I try to make it, things easy for myself and easy for others so what I'm doing is if you get out of line I'm being kind of careful you see but if you do get out of line which I do often when we get to the end we're gonna fix that so you don't have to worry about it don't freak out it will be okay alright so now I have my bright and shiny area which is the light filtering through the gym and coming back out again and I have the highlight basically where the light enters the gym or bounces off there the light is bouncing off here off the surface here it's coming through okay now I'm gonna put this uh, red coral I'm gonna set it aside for a minute and I'm gonna move on to my burgundy right there burgundy and I'm gonna fuse this as well I guess I should put that there so you can see what color I'm using uh, and hold them vertical when you fuse I don't know if I said that before okay so I'm this here and fuse I'm gonna fuse it about 10 seconds maybe actually with the darker colors you have to fuse longer because there's just so much saturation of color there so I suggest with the darker colors that you fuse longer so maybe closer to 20 seconds test it test it test it okay see that's really light but it's gonna go dark pretty fast so what I'm gonna do is start just outside of this area and I'm gonna just start tapping in over where I already colored this darker color now you can't see it very much right now I'm gonna tap even a little bit into the white and I'm just kind of tapping and moving and these little uh, edges are going to show but the the thing is they'll blend on the bottom side so even though the edges show a little bit that's okay all right now I'm starting to get a little bit of color so I'm gonna move down and I want to keep on tapping because this is what I want to accomplish I want to show some texture inside the gym that's just me you don't have to do it that way you can do and if you notice you can do perfectly smooth the whole way if you want to I just like the effect if you notice I'm not tapping into the white spaces I'm going now into the colored spaces that I've already made and I'm just tapping in there and kind of almost making some dots or some squiggles now I'm gonna go back to that kind of squiggly pattern down here in this area and remember what we're doing is layering so if you think of it in terms of layering you have only certain things that are going to show when you finish so what I'm doing is leaving more light in these areas and creating this dark space around it okay and now remember I said I want this to be very dark right by this so I'm gonna very carefully just make a line and this is gonna blend in with the color that's next to it which is exactly what I want and now I'm going to go around the edge very carefully and kind of color this in this part is not really blended and I'm gonna leave a little lighter space here just below that bright highlight this is our brightest highlight this is our next brightest highlight so we have darks and lights and a lot of contrast which is what makes these gems really really beautiful so around the edge now I'm gonna use the very tip so let me see if I can show you that this nib has a very fine tip and if I put virtually no pressure 
like if I put pressure I get a line like that but if I basically put no pressure <laughs> it's hard to do up in the air okay no pressure I get a nice thin line okay no pressure it's gonna lay down the ink that's what I'm gonna do on this edge I'm gonna do like a no pressure line it does not have to be perfect because again this is not the final layer so you're gonna see that mine does not look perfect but this is gonna add a lot of depth to our gem it's gonna make it appear very round when we're finished okay now I'm gonna go back and I want this edge to be a little spotted. I'm going to put some little dots. I'm putting much smaller dots. I'm not going to put them everywhere. Um, these are going to be covered up, like I said. And then I also want to put another layer of ink here next to our highlight. Our brightest highlight, which is the reflection off the top. Now you can layer these inks, which is what I'm doing. If you layer a lighter ink over it, it's going to remove, uh, especially if it's been fused, it's going to remove some of the ink. So keep that in mind. It doesn't work as much, quite as much that way with these dark colors. Okay, so I am finished with the burgundy. And I want to now move back to my, my RD number two, my red coral. I prefer to use the names of the numbers. There's something just more personal about it to me. <laughs> if I use the names, it just appeals to me more than the numbers do. And I'm going to fuse this. And I'm going to fuse this until it is clear. All right, there we go. It is clear. And now, okay, now that it's clear, I'm going to go back in over where we were and just dot in some more. If you're familiar with alcohol inks in the bottle, you'll know that uh, this blending this is basically blending solution um, or toner that's in the in the ink they use it to make the ink I'm sure and so and just be really I want this to be really soft and I also want to soften this edge a little in some places and I think I'm gonna put like a few little dots out here these dots will just show up they just show up like there's a little shadow in there or something. Okay. Now I'm just going to keep going because now you can see I have the ink, the color flowing back in. And I'm just going to keep going. And going over this. Now I'm going to stop for a second, actually. I'm going to refuse this pen because what I want to do is these spots that are light, that, are, that we left that are white, I want to fill those in. But I want them to be... Uh, this really light light amount of color so I'm gonna fuse until it's practically clear all right now it's almost clear and I'm gonna go over those little spots because I want them to blend in but I didn't want them to be as dark as everything else okay I need to fuse again because I used all of my I don't want my highlights to disappear All right, and now I'm just gonna color in with gradient color, with the gradient color that you can get from the chameleons. I'm just gonna color in smoothly over the top. And it may pick up a little bit of that darker ink, that's okay. And I'm just gonna keep on going. Go completely back over that. I think that can be a little darker there. Along with that. And now, now I'm gonna fuse again because I want this to be pretty light. But not for as long. And I'm gonna do the same. I want to start actually with the lightest area. And now I'm going to start kind of making this have more of a circular 
um, a domed feel by adding some darker color on the edges like this to make it be more curved feeling. And if you notice, I still have this line. I'm going to do this. Just color over that line. And what's going to happen is it's going to blend. It's going to blend. It just takes a minute. It's going to blend and disappear. It's going to just become a nice shadow there. See? Nice. Very nice. Because I don't want that to be a solid line. I'm going to put a little few dots here. Um, and also I'm still kind of not super happy with this edge. I want it to be a little more blended in. And so that's what I'm doing now is just going back and blending in this edge. Really nice. And I'm going to use the fuse again. Now I'm in creative mode. I'm like, okay, is this looking the way I want it to look? I have my light coming from this direction. It's fusing through here. But see this harsh line? I don't like that. I don't I don't want these harsh lines, so that's why I'm doing some more fusing. This is my thought process in doing this. So adding the more fused toner will automatically allow you to soften those edges uh, because it just makes it blend. It's just like it's alcohol ink, just like in the bottle. So it then it blends out it when it touches each other. It re-wets. That's the word I'm looking for. When they touch each other, it re-wets. Now, I, you know, Chameleon might or might not have a specific blending pen. I don't really know. Um, but you don't have to have that because what you can do is just use a light color and fuse it. And this is a fairly light color. And use it. And you want this to be kind of uh, ah, too much ink. Fusing again. Need to hold them vertically. Okay. I'm not fusing long enough. Let me count. One, one thousand. I'm going to go back into that edge where I drew that circle or that oval shape. It's really not an oval, is it? It's really kind of a, I don't know, it's like a, I don't know what you call that shape. <laughs> I don't know what you call that shape. All right, and so I'm just going to keep layering on. And this, this is taking me a little bit longer because it's big. By doing this. All right, okay, now then, what should be my clo close to final part of doing this gemstone is to go back to the red number five and darken. Actually, let me fuse it just a little bit. That way it's gonna blend better. Now that's fused, but it's darker, which is exactly what I want. I want that gradient color all the way to the edges, if I can get it. It does take a little bit of practice, like you saw these. I, I mean, I just worked, I basically worked on gemstones pretty much all day. Um, and it does take some practice to, to get it to look the way you want it to look. So... Hang in there. You can do it. Don't give up. You can do it. That's some um, toning.
there. I don't know if you can tell. See how that's getting a little bit lighter? It's because there's a lot of toning, toner. I took a, a while to, f to fuse it. I'm going to take advantage of that and put this highlight by taking out a little bit of color right below there. Now, I realized at this point, when I turn this a certain direction, this looks like a balloon, but it's a gem balloon, so it counts, okay? All right, now I'm really liking how that looks. I like the look of this, and so my next step is going to be to kind of clean up the edges, and the way I do that is I take my Pigma Micron, and I just kind of sketchily go back over. Now remember, this is a wire wrapped gemstone. That's what we're calling it, wire wrapped gemstone. So if you get a line somewhere that you don't want it, you can find a way to incorporate that into your gem. Make sure that's still writing. It is. It's hard to see because it's on top of that burgundy color. Um, so for me though, I'm not interested in perfect perfection and in fact I intentionally use materials like alcohol inks in the bottle like magic pencils that are you know you don't usually erase I intentionally do those things so that I have to work with what I get because otherwise I get really bogged down in having it be a certain way I don't know if you've ever experienced that I know that I'm not alone because I know a lot of artists who experience the same thing um, but the way I deal with that is just to, um, like I said, to use a medium, ink, something that is not easy to just erase. Especially if I'm learning to do something new because then I either have to just scrap the whole piece, which I rarely do because I consider it all a learning experience. Or I can accept that, oh, there's a line there or there's a mark there. And, you know, then I know a machine did not create this piece of art. I have nothing against digital art. I think digital art's amazing. But when I do something by hand, I don't want it to look like a computer made it. So that's what I'm saying. Anyway, so you can clean up all these edges uh, and you just keep working your way around until it is just exactly as dark as you want it. That also just really darkens the edge. Uh, you could use a, I'm using a brown. I say it's brown. Could be a sepia, a pigma micron. You could use black if you prefer. I just feel like for these, and I'm using their, these for Inktober. They are uh, softer. Okay, so I just keep working on that. Like I'll keep going on some of these edges, uh, but I don't want to. I don't want to bore you with that. Mm -hmm. Can't stop myself. Sorry. Maybe I'll fast forward through. That's what I will do. I'm gonna fast forward through this part of working on the edges. All right, so I used my Pigma Micron, I've got this. Now the last step would be to use your Jelly Roll. Now you don't have to do this, but I like it. That's why I do it. You do what works for you and then tap it. So like what I'm doing is it's light, but once I extend it past my space, I'm tapping it so it's not quite so bright. And I'm putting like a highlight here. some dots like the dots now the thing is if you mess up or you do something you don't like with a gel pen guess what it's white go back over it with your marker and then 
I'm going to scribble in some white into here. That same scribbly kind of motion that I used before, I'm going to do that in this area because I want that light to be really bouncing around and I'm going to make like a really bright area by just really scribbling it in. I'm not going to tap that part. When you tap it, it makes it lighter. Uh, and I feel like this needs some highlight over here. And I like kind of scratchy, sketchy. I don't, I'm not going for hyper realism here. So, tap it out. All right. And so there you have a gemstone. And if you want to, you can add a shadow. Just take the baby blue chameleon pin. Oops, wrong end. Use whichever tip you prefer. I love these brush nibs. Fuse it. You don't have to fuse for very long. It's a really light color. Now, I decided the light was coming from this way. And it's bouncing off, apparently. So what I'm going to do is color under the edge on this side with this really light blue. Now, Chameleon has gray pins. If you want gray, go for gray. But if you... you if you um, understand that cool colors recede when you look at them, that means they look like they're moving away from you. And warm colors advance. So if you know that and you have a super light blue like this baby blue, you can use that to your advantage and you can create what really looks like a gray or a, a, a light shadow. Uh, and if you combine that then with this really, this lagoon is not as light as you think it will be. I want to show you that because that's sort of important to know about the spins. Just because it looks light here, it, I mean, maybe the exact color is this, but you may think, oh, this is really light because look, this is really light. But see the grayness or the toned down color of this? This is much more tonally darker than this baby blue. So let me show you. So even though that's a pretty light cap, look at how dark that mark is. Look how dark this is if you just color with it. Compared to this. Okay, this is almost clear. But this one, even though the cap is... Like if you squint at those, they look similar. They look the same in tone, but they are not. So keep in mind that test your markers. Um, okay, so, but this can add to your shadow if you just fuse it. Just fuse it. You get a lighter of this really kind of uh, grayish green. It's a blue green, but it's, it's t really, t it's tonely. It's toned down. Um, okay, so see that's really clear already and you just put where you want your darkest shadow. You put this lagoon just next to the edge where you want your darkest shadow to be and it's going to blend right in with that blue. Oh, I pulled mine out a little bit. Um, okay, so I'm going to put the lid back on there. See, this is art. This is the real process of making art. Art is not, oh, I did one thing and now one layer and I'm finished. That is not, I mean, it's, don't get me wrong, some people can probably do that. But for most people, art is about layers and adjusting and going back and saying, okay, how does this work and how does that work? Okay, so I wanted to just take that shadow out a little bit more so you can see it. Now you could go around the whole entire gym if you wanted to. I just wanted to show you that part. Um, and then I just, I like this wire wrapping, so I just want to enhance this wire wrapping a little bit more. I'm holding my pen really vertical. And I don't like those lines out like that. And I don't want it to be perfect. So I want that to go over. And then really enhance this gym. Okay, I am super happy with this gym. I am super happy with this gym. It's quite a bit more complicated than this one. This is really basic. 
it's not as basic as it could be, but look, look at that glitter and shine. Oh my goodness. Can you believe that was created with a pen? Can you believe that was created basically with two pens? I mean, it's just outstanding. Uh, and so I'm just like, I am in love with these pens, I have to tell you. And yes, okay. So thank you so much for watching. That was my little tutorial on how to make a gemstone. If you have any questions, be sure and leave it in the comments below. Below. Okay. And give me that thumbs up. Um, what else? And don't forget to go check out my blog. Go check out the other artists who did some really cool uh, coloring with the Copics uh, and made some gemstones. And hers are hers are really cool looking. They're not quite the same as mine. You know, styles are different. Uh, and I will see you next time. Bye. Thanks for watching. And I'm musing and I'm gonna edit this out of the video. Okay.